Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Rob Dew, and today's date is Thursday, July 5th, 2012. And here's a little look at what we have coming up tonight. Tonight, shocking video reveals the truth behind the Syrian freedom fighters. Plus, the fog of the InfoWar as DARPA wants to bust whistleblowers with disinformation technology. Then, the chief administrator for the Drug Enforcement Agency shares her expertise. Is heroin worse for someone's health than marijuana? All illegal drugs are, are bad. Does this mean you don't know? Heroin causes an addiction. Okay. That causes, uh, causes many problems and is very hard to, uh, to kick. So does that mean that the health impact of heroin is worse than marijuana? Is that what you're telling me? I think I think you're asking a subjective question. No, it's objective. Uh, just looking at the science, this is your area of expertise. Meanwhile, law enforcement officers in Long Beach are caught on tape using excessive force in a raid on a marijuana dispensary. Plus, Mike Adams, the health ranger, talks with Rob Dew about the Merck vaccine fraud. All that plus much more up next on the InfoWars Nightly News. Our top story tonight was going to be the $3 billion fine levied against GlaxoSmithKline because they were misleading people about Paxil and pushing it on kids. But we're going to cover that with Mike Adams in the next segment. So we move on to test point to possible Arafat poisoning, and that is out of Al Jazeera from July 3rd, 2012. Eight years after his death, it remains a mystery what exactly killed the longtime Palestinian leader Yasser Arafat. And basically his wife sent some... Uh, samples of his toothbrush, his uh, headpiece, some of his clothing and to be tested, and it was found to contain abnormal levels of polonium, a rare, highly active radioactive element. And the tests carried out of uh, the samples suggested there was high levels of polonium inside his body when he died, and that was the same substance which killed uh, a Russian activist back a couple years ago. So it'll be interesting to see what comes out out of that. Now we move on to Syria. Shocking videos reveal the truth behind Syrian freedom fighters, and this is by Paul Joseph Watson. And despite the fact that both parties on both sides of the conflict in Syria have been responsible for violence, the international NATO-aligned media has often hyped the dubious accusations of Assad sponsor massacres while virtually ignoring massacres, beheadings, and other acts of brutality by other rebel insurgents. And we're going to go to this shot here I actually pulled up some of the videos some of it I couldn't even show you it's so graphic and disgusting what's going on so let's roll that clip this is the atrocities here's some young children that were gunned down obviously I mean it's it's I couldn't even show you that video there's just a still of that there's a, a civilian that was hung who was supposedly aligned with Assad and then they shot his body up uh, the next video is some mercenary, U.S. mercenaries torture and hang and then shoot mentally ill person. And uh, while, they're, while they're doing that, they're shouting Allah Akbar. And um, then here's a child that was shot. And here's some more activists that were shot. They were pro-Assad activists, and they were kidnapped, tortured, and um, killed by Syrian rebels. The next one is a bunch of activists that were thrown into a ditch. There's a guy who was beheaded. And honestly... I didn't want to show you this video. It's, it's gruesome. It's horrible. If you want to go to the article, the article is called Shocking Videos Reveal Truth Behind Syrian Freedom Fighters, and it's by Paul Joseph Watson. It was um, on yesterday's InfoWars. You can probably find it in the archive, featured archive section, or the featured stories archive. So I encourage you to go look at that. Now, below those videos, there's another set of videos, and this was fake videos that were put out by anti-Assad forces. It shows people putting on, you know, fake wounds. It shows there's some guys there. Look, there's their head wounds. Peace, everybody. You know, we're doing the right thing. We're, we're creating fake propaganda. I mean, it's not even real atrocities. So they're there lined up. There was another video. It shows some guy kicking his leg and with a fake blood wound. Here's a guy who wakes up from his funeral. Watch this. They're, they're, they're uh, reading. Oh, there. Oh, wait. There. Oh, he's awake. He's not even really dead. And so, I mean, this is just crazy what goes on. There was another video that was shot of, of a supposed massacre. 
and it cuts. Uh, you don't see the whole thing. When you go to the Al Jazeera footage, it shows real quick clips of a guy kicking his leg, and he's got blood coming out, which turns out to be fake blood. And then another guy that they're dragging who said he didn't want any blood on him, and, and they show him dragging, and they're dragging him away in the Al Jazeera footage. So, wow, it'd be interesting if the mainstream media could put that out. Well, oh, actually, they did today. Syrian hacktivists launch Al Jazeera cyber attack. And this is really interesting. Al Jazeera's stream Twitter account was hacked today by a group labeling itself as the Syrian Electronic Army, or SEA. As soon as the hackers gain access to the account, they began sending out Infowar stories about the real situation in Syria. I just want to go on the record. We were not responsible for that attack in any way, shape, or form. We don't engage in that kind of behavior. But I think it was very interesting. I'm going to go ahead and read you some of the tweets. One of the first tweets to be sent out after the attack was a link to a recent Infowars story entitled, Syrian Rebels Ransack Christian Churches. All right, and you can see that's the actual tweet right there. The second one, another tweet entitled, The Truth Finally Revealed About Syria's Insurgency, which was what we just showed you, which included a link from our story yesterday, was a companion of videos showing how rebel insurgents were responsible for massacres, beheadings, and other acts of brutality, as well as staging fake massacre and death videos to falsely implicate the Syrian government. And there's the, the Twitter page right there where you can actually see the actual tweets that went out under Al Jazeera. So I'd like to give a special thanks out to the Syrian Electronic Army. Thank you for putting out the truth through the mainstream media or one of its arms, Al Jazeera, and attempting to show people what is really going on, or at least giving both sides of the story. I'm sure both sides are at fault in some way or another, and it's a conflict that we shouldn't get involved in. But you know what's going to happen. We're going to commit our troops and our resources to that and start another regime change and install our puppets that eventually won't do our bidding, so we'll have to send another army in to clean up that mess. Moving on, the fog of info war. DARPRO wants to bust whistleblowers with disinformation technology. And that's from Steve Watson. And DARPA wants to stop whistleblowers before they can leak any data by enticing them with fake documents and information that will reveal their identities. wonder how much they spent on that. In a recent paper for the DOD's technological research arm, contractors note that they have constructed a prototype for automatically generating and distributing believable misinformation and then tracking access and attempted misuse of it. We call this disinformation technology, the paper continues. Uh, that's what they're going to do. They're going to spend their time creating, you know, blueprints or fake papers or fake government documents that then will get put out there. We'll pick it up. Maybe other sites will pick it up. And then they can come out and say, oh, no, that was disinformation. That's not even really true. So who knows? Nobody's going to believe anything that comes out anymore. So it works for them twofold. A uh, secrecy expert, Steve Aftergood, had this comment. He says, if only researchers, researchers devoted as much ingenuity to compacting to combating spurious secrecy and needless classification, shrinking the universe of secret information would have a better way to simplify the task of securing the remainder, after good noted in his email to Danger Room. The DARPA approach seems to be based on the assumption that whatever is classified is properly classified and that leaks may occur randomly throughout the system. But neither of those assumptions is likely to be true, he noted. So there you go. Your government's going to spend a lot of money to create a bunch of BS that may or may not get reported just so they could find the people who are good people out there and who would turn in that information. But it, it's, it's interesting. What if they didn't see that information? What if it's like, you know, the U.S. government drops babies in acid to see how quickly they'll dissolve, and they put that information out there? Well, that's information anybody would put out there, any reasonable thinking human being. So they're going to go around and then single out those people and probably prosecute them for blowing, you know, government secrets and all that other nonsense. It's crazy. Now, on today's show, uh, Alex had me in there. He was at, talking about the, this, this story here. TSA demands bizarre new power to test drinks purchased in airports. And this is something that I actually witnessed. Alex had witnessed it, but I guess we're so used to that kind of stuff going on. Anyway, here's the quote. Rules on taking liquids through airport security passed in the af aftermath of the highly dubious attempted liquid bombing incident in 2006, which completely collapsed in court, have already been savaged as pointless and unnecessary. Mothers are forced to drink their own breast milk in a procedure that seems to be designed to achieve little else than humiliating the traveler. In one incident earlier this year, working mother Amy Strand was even made to pump best breast milk into her empty feeding bottles before being allowed through security. 
So, and I had actually witnessed something like this. I had witnessed a line of people. We were about to get on our flight. And it, you know, it happens right as we're, they're calling our number to get on, you know, another cattle call situation. They start wanting to come up to travelers like, open up your drink. Let me see it. Let me see what you got there. So here's a little bit of what we talked about today on the Alex Jones Show. I saw Rob Dude down by the water cooler. And he said, oh, yeah, you know, uh, you have us fly a lot to interviews. We see that all the time. Well, next time, get footage of it. Because uh, all the time, I saw the new zombie rounds they're selling. Like three months ago, all it is is super double-aught buck, basically military-type buckshot. Just, it, I mean, it does have a bigger kick when you pull the trigger. And I thought, man, that's a good news article. I bought some to have the guys do it. And a month later, it was big national news. Mm -hmm. so we got to go with our instincts, not just to get big national news, but what's important. Right. That's probably why I never did anything with the zombie rounds. Why is that really important? Well, it shows how they're getting into this whole zombie culture and how what they program, people start to behave like. They're making a zombie theme park in Detroit right now. Exactly. And, and that was my next point. I meant to cover that uh, on Monday. But, but uh, on this TSA front, it's about mindlessly doing what they say. They now even do searches at the gate. Mm -hmm. Why did I never videotape that? Because that's never been on the news. Why, I mean, they do swabbing, but you have seen what I'm talking about. But you saw something I haven't seen where people beg to prove their, their minions. Right. That's... And see, that's the behavior they're looking for, Stockholm Syndrome. Tell folks what you saw. It was literally bizarre. Waiting in line to get in is a Southwest Airlines flight, and they had the TSA. Do you remember where? There. Do you remember where? It was in Austin. It was in Austin. We were taking off somewhere. I think I was with Aaron, probably with Aaron because we traveled the most together. Um, and we're, I remember seeing the cart and, um, you know, they walk up to someone, sir, let me check your drink. And they hold the little, the little uh, slip over it, whatever it's got, it detects for bomb residue. And they hold that over the drink and they say, okay, you can cap it up. And they did it to somebody else. And then this old lady walks up and she goes, can you test mine? <laughs> I mean, it's literally this old little old lady voice. I'm, I couldn't believe it. You know, we're actually walking to get on the plane and I didn't want to, you know, obviously I didn't want to get drug into a surge or I, I would have taped it, but next time I'll just tape it and we'll just let the chips fall. Well,